evening guys and welcome back to the classroom with architect mark and i suppose if you've been following the uh, sequence of videos you will notice that last video it was stopped abruptly at the end right there that's because something happened with the uh control of the active section plane and it wasn't it wasn't working uh, properly after I tried a little bit of tweaking. So I just cut it up to the point where it's still working. So you should know that there is such a problem with that. If you try to use that for a special effect or something, uh, should be wary that it's not easily replicable if you do encounter a problem so what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna build up on that uh, we still have our scene from last time I've recreated it and we're going to do some more uh, animation ideas and then maybe uh, outputting it the material so we'll see how that works let me just prepare the timer here so we got the 12 on the ready here mm -hmm. it's 12 and let's head on over to the classroom and check out our environment see that everything's working fine yep <clears throat> so sorry about that let's get into it right now all right, so we still have our four scenes here, uh, apart from navigating using these tabs up here, you can also use the, the named scene here. So you can jump from one scene to whichever scene and the camera path will just take the closest uh, method to get there from wherever the camera is heading uh, at a specific time. So uh, we tried the section plane last time. So now <clears throat> let's try for shadows because that is a very interesting one as well. So let's turn shadows on. We have shadows over here. Okay. So let's turn shadows on it. That looks like. Okay, so we have basically the sun behind the camera right now, and the shadow pattern moves from left to right over the course of this particular day setting. So what we're gonna do is to we're gonna make the shadow move this way while the camera is moving that way. So let's see this scene. Let's update it. As you can see here, the shadow settings will be updated. Then we'll go to the next scene. Turn shadows on here and move the move the slider towards this area here around up to let's say there and save this right so let's try it now here we go so the shadow moves along with our uh, with our animation as expected and Let's try to move that time a little bit so we can see it slower. This is the one that we were trying at the last video, but it didn't work after this. So this one should be uh, the shadow path movement is a much more reliable one to be using. 
Okay, so you can see that the, the sun will move down and then more shadows will be cast over at our side here. Which is great. You can use that for another special effect apart from the... Uh, what do you call this? The active section cut. The problem with using such a technique is... Uh, when you're rendering a constantly moving light, the calculation is not constant. And if you're using a third party software or renderer, it might have some issues because of this. So, right now, our scene three doesn't have a shadow. So, mm -hmm. A shadow here you can see that it's still moving to the position of the first shadow let's see that okay so it's defaulting back to the scene one shadow which is which is okay so now let's go to scene four and The shadows here have moved uh, from the scene one shadow. Yeah, let's just push it a little further. Make it like evening time, like twilight. So let's save that. Save the scene. And let's do it a little bit faster now so that we won't take too long to check it out. Let's do just five seconds with no transition. All right. Let's try it. All the scenes now have shadows and they're supposed to move all the time. Go and play the animation. So it's moving from scene one to scene two shadow as expected, then goes back to scene one shadow, and then goes to around twilight for scene four. Then goes back to scene one shadow. So that's, that's good. So all of the shadow control is fully uh, automated right now in our animation. Uh, let's now talk about to export this. So as you can see here, well, we can't see it because I'm in the way. Let's remove me for a little while and check out our export controls which has an export animation here and you have the option of a video directly or an image set normally if you're the here's the tip if you're working with a long timeline like say uh, a full half minute or a minute I would suggest highly that you go with an image set instead of a video thing is with an image set you will need you will need a, a third-party program to stitch these images together because well, that's just how the animation works because all animations are a series of images that are uh, displayed to you at a specific frame rate. That's why when we go to image set, uh, we should be finding... Okay, so let's just go somewhere where there's nothing. So we have... 
see here it's gonna output jpegs which is not bad but let's look at the options that we have right here so we have a specific resolution it's 720p and can be full hd and smaller standard definition 480p or a custom if you want it to be higher like uh 4K video or something like that. When you press here, preview frame size, this thing will come along and shows you just around how big the current setting is. So right now this is 720p, so it's around half this screen. And then if you go a smaller one and preview it, that much. Your one should be full size of that screen it's exactly that much so going with 720p and you can identify the frame rate here this means how many images will be outputted for every second that you identified in the uh, animation so right now if you do <clears throat> 24 fps for every five seconds that's around 121 or 100 some around, around 120 yeah 120 frames will be generated for you uh, but you can adjust this to like say 30 which is a normal frame rate 24 is cinematic frame rate 29.97 it's like the assumed normal but all of those depending on what you really want to do with your uh, images for example if you want to if you wanted to create a gif a gif you can just choose like five uh, frames per second and work off that so those are our animation export options for the image set now let's go to the options available to us when we go to a video so okay. so the video defaults to an H264 MP4 codec, which is actually a very, uh, very nicely compressed type of video output and should not take uh, a lot of space if you went with that. So let's try and export a 480p standard at 24 frames. And check out just how long that will take. Loop to starting scene. No, we don't want that. So it ends with scene four. When when the scene gets to that, it ends the uh, sequence. And then AA basically means that all the lines are fine tuned. Uh, you. Keeping it checked will be will lead to a sharper image. So let's try and export that and see around how much time it will be necessary. So as you can see, as the timer goes down, the size goes up, and a lot of frames are being generated right now. So 362 for uh four five seconds all right so it's done let's see what that looks like before we end this video this is here in document there we go so you can see standard is um what do you call this it's it's not in a letterbox format and it stops at our scene 4 when the camera gets to that a total of 15 seconds because scene 1 to scene 2 
5 seconds, scene 2 to scene 3, 5 seconds, and then scene 3 to scene 4 is also 5 seconds, which makes up 15 seconds exactly. So there, the, that's how you do it with uh, the video. And for images, you get a lot of images in the destination folder that are numbered which will be identified by a, an editing program to be a complete set and import it as a video anyway. So I hope you learned something tonight and sorry about the mishap last episode. Uh, this should have made. Anyway, I will see you guys again. Take care and bye-bye.